Well, hello everyone. This is episode three, and in this episode, I want to spend a little bit of time showing you how I built the very aspects of my track. Um, obviously, a lot of this was derived from what Chamber of Souls did, and so I kind of learned from that and then customized it for what I needed. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Okay, for my whole track, I used inch and a half PVC pipe. Um, we can get it at both Lowe's and Home Depot here. So inch and a half PVC pipe, I just bought 10 footers. I found out that if I bought them in bulk, I could get them um, less expensive. So that really helped. Um, the total length of my track, as I've kind of mapped it out, should be about 220 feet of track. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. So you can see on this diagram, um, this is my backyard to scale. And I drew this kind of in SketchUp. It's not perfect, but it gives you the idea of how the track is going to flow. And it gives me an idea of how many sections, how many 90s I need to make, a few 45s, how many just 10 foot or 5 foot straight sections I need. And then I kind of added all that up and that's how I got my total footage. So about 220 foot track when it's all said and done. One other note is that I don't have a huge backyard. Um, I'm working with about 66 feet wide and then 44 feet deep. But that 44 feet counts about 10 foot of a patio with a patio cover, which I will utilize as part of my haunt. We'll load and unload underneath the patio cover, and then the first turn will take you out, and then kind of back into the patio cover, as you can see on the diagram. So here you can see what a 10 foot piece of track looks like. Um, it's pretty basic. It's two 10 foot pieces of the PVC pipe. And then the cross pieces are 30 inches, and they're 2 by 4s just going across. So I have a little bit sticking out on each side. And then the uprights are just 2 by 2s um, about 4 inches tall, with the top curved out so that the track will sit right in it. And then I use 3-inch screws to go in kind of at an angle into the... Um, the 2 by 2 and I go in at an angle so that the wheel coming this way and this way on the track won't hit those screws going in and I countersink them just a little bit so that they stay in the track. Um, I'll also show you how I cut those um, using a hole saw how I cut those screws and how I kind of speed up the process of building those uprights. So what I want to show you now is I have the 2 by 4 for the base of the track and I'm going to show you how I make the little upright that holds the track. And so it's kind of a two-part process. So the first part is, is I use a hole saw bit on my drill press. Here's the two by two wood. I built this little jig that will hold this securely in place and I can slide it in. I bolt this jig to my drill press to hold the jig sturdy. So here we go. And I'm just going to cut out just a little bit of arch right here out of this to make the groove. Here we go. Okay, so that creates this part. Then to speed up the process, I take this. I already have a piece and blocked here. This is, creates me a four inch piece. So all I have to do is shove this right up against that jig. I'm gonna put my headset on, sorry cameraman. I slide that right up against there and then saw that. What you end up with is this little piece. So this would go on my 2x4, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So then the track rides right in there, and I'll show you later how to put the track in. So I'm going to show you the little jig I made so that I don't have to measure these each time that I do one. I made up a jig, and then it makes it easy because ultimately I'm going to put two screws in each one of these and you want to make sure you pre-drill these screw holes before you put them in. So I'm not going to do the whole process but here's the jig that I've made. It has two, bo three boxes here. This is for an old size. So this goes right in this hole. This goes right in this hole and now it's ready to go. All I have to do is set a 2 by 4 on top of this and it fits right here firmly. I drill my two holes for the piece, screw it in, and when I pull it back out, it looks like this. And it's ready to go with the curved track. So these are the base pieces that will hold up the track. 
and this little jig makes it so that I can speed that up and I don't have to measure these every single time. I know that they're all going to be exactly the 26 inches, which is the width of my track. Okay, now that you know how to build the cross pieces and the straight piece of track, it's a little more complex to build a curved piece of track. So still use the same 2x4, still use the same uprights, but now we have to curve PVC. So what I did is I built a jig that holds a piece of PVC pipe. It's capped on one end, and then it kind of pops into the, this pipe with these little brackets I have. At the very top is a funnel. And the idea is you take sand and you fill up that pipe with hot sand. Um, I did mine at about 425 degrees for about an hour and a half in my oven. And when I did that, it got at just the right temperature. So cap the bottom, fill up the pipe with sand, cap the top, and then I take that pipe and lay it over a jig. And the jig, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made that jig and you need two different sections on the jig. You need one for the outside piece of track and then the inside piece of track has a smaller radius. So I'll show you exactly how I did that as well. Okay, what I wanna show you now is how I made my funnel for the sand. So I'm gonna put on the screen um, the flashing that I bought. So it's a flat piece of metal and then it has like a kind of a funnel tape shape underneath it. And usually those are used on your roof flipped over and they're for vents or whatever. So. I'm going to use this piece of cardboard kind of as an example. This is where the hole would be. So what I did is, it's about this size. This is probably a little bit bigger, but it's about this size. But what I'm going to do is, and what I did on my metal, is I cut two slits on the metal. So I'm going to do the same things. I used uh, tin snips on the metal to do that, but obviously this is cardboard, so I'm just going to use some scissors and cut this real quick. Okay, so once I had those two slits cut, I then took these side pieces and bent them up. So now you're making like a channel, like this. And then the end, I'll flip it upside down, maybe you can see a little bit. The end folded down over it, and then the sides folded into the side like this. So when you're all done, you have this box. And then I just use rivets on the side of my metal to create this box and then it had the piece sticking out there's a piece sticking out here and then that's what I inserted into the top of the pipe and then I put all of this whole contraption and you'll see on the screen you'll see the board that I hooked it to so that the pipe would slide slide right up into the hole and then pop into place on my jig which I'll show you that as well okay I'm going to show you how I built my jig to create my arches for my track, the curves. So what you're looking at is the jig, and I'm gonna show you the process of how I got um, to this point. And there's a piece of pipe on the lower piece of track. So this would be the two pieces of track that would make up a 90 degree curve. So I'll show you how to build this jig. Um, these are just screws, if you zoom in, you can see that these are just screws. I use three inch screws, um, you just wanna be able to screw some in and then have enough to hold the pipe um, and the pipe will just lay over it and in, in its um, soft state with the hot sand um, it'll just work perfectly and I'll describe more about that process in a little bit. Okay so the way I'm going to show you how I did this is by using a tool called SketchUp. So this is SketchUp and what I have here is uh, basically I use two pieces of 4 by 8 plywood and on the back side of them, I used some wood and screwed it into from the back side so that the two pieces kind of act as one big piece. Um, and then you'll notice down at the bottom, I have some dimensions of what I did. Um, going back to the track, so for this piece of the 90, you want to make sure that that distance is not longer than 10 feet. In my case, um, I use 10 foot pipe, so that's why I wanted it less than 10 feet. And I think it comes out to like 6.2 something um, for, the, for the radius. Um, I use six feet because I just want to make sure that I wasn't going to go longer than my 10 foot piece of pipe. So on this, you'll notice that the outside track is at 72 inches, which is six feet. And then to figure out the inside arch, um, you subtract from this 26 inches which is the width of the track. So if we go back, that's my space between these two tracks is 26 inches. And then you draw another arch. So I'm gonna show you how we do this. Um, so let's just start with the outside track and I'm gonna draw a quick arch and show you how I did this. So starting here, you go out six feet and then 
what I did is on use a string, put a little screw down here in the corner of this board, and um, tie the string to a washer and then hook that on the screw. And then go out six feet and you're going to place another washer and tie it to the string. Then I stuck a sharpie into the washer and then drew, just swung it around that pivot point down here to create, oops, let's try that again. Swung it around that pivot point to create this arch. So there is my outside arch. And if you look at the distance of that, it's just under 10 feet. Then I shortened the string by the width of my track, which in this case, like I said, is 26 inches. So I drew this arch and then I want to go 26 inches in. So I leave the string still attached down here. I subtract 26 inches or make a mark on the wood actually and get your washer so that it lines up here and then created a second arch um, at the 26 inch mark like this. So now you have your two uh, pieces of track and then you just put screws every few inches just like I did here. You put screws every few inches all along that whole path and it gives you a surface to lay your, oops, to lay your um, pipe on when it's ready. Now, um, this is a lot of wood to work with. So I actually, I didn't draw this. I just kind of eyeballed it, but I went out maybe a few inches beyond eight inches, let's say beyond the outside arch and cut off that extra material just because I wanted to be able to carry this board around without, um, without it being so heavy because I use like three quarter inch plywood. So I'm going to simulate that. Um, here in SketchUp. Now you'll notice there's a problem because to, for this to work you want the pipe to lay over it. So if I were to stand this piece of uh, wood up on its end like this, you have a problem because it's not going to balance very well on this end. So what I did is I measured up maybe 18 inches and then I cut right across here. So I went 18 inches up each side and then chopped this piece of the wood out as well. And then I could stand it up on that edge and it would work. So now going back to my picture, you see what I did here. And the reason I have those little blocks there, I probably just barely need those. I probably don't need those. These can actually touch the ground and be just about right. But I, this was my first try for this part of the pipe. So I put it up on blocks. For the top one, you just have a little bit that hangs off on each side, just a tiny little bit. So one of the challenges that you have when you're building your track is you want to make sure that the wheels, when they're going over the track, that it's a very smooth experience. So you can't use, you could, but it would be for a bumpy ride. You can't use outside couplings on the pipe because then your wheels would be bouncing over those as it went over. So the idea is you use inside couplings. Well, they don't make something like that out of the box. So what I did is, is I took a piece of half, inch and a half PVC, one of the same pieces of pipe for the track, and I cut two cuts in it so that it looks like this. And then all you do is you take this and you can put it in a toaster oven or you can use a heat gun on it or whatever. You heat it up till it's warm and pliable and then you stick it inside the other pipe. You squeeze it together because with this gap it'll allow you to squeeze it together. Put it inside the other piece of pipe and I pushed it all the way into almost all the way. I want to make sure I could still pull it out, so I left a little bit sticking out. And then let it cool like that. Now you have an uh, inside coupling for your two pieces of pipe. And then once I did that, um, when you put your screws in, you just want to make sure you capture, ca capture this piece of pipe as well as the outside of the piece of pipe when you're screwing in um, from an angle. The other thing I did is that for my uprights that I made like this for a piece of... Uh, you know, for a cross piece. Wherever there's two pieces of pipe meeting in this, this two by two is a little bit small. So I made these with two by fours just where the track is gonna meet. So you'll see a piece of two by four on some of these and that's where two pieces of track meet. And it gives me a little more room to work with and screw into when I'm dealing with where the uh, two pieces of pipe are meeting up. Um, so there you go. Okay, thank you for watching this episode. I probably didn't cover all the questions you may have, but feel free to leave questions in the comments. 
that's it. Um, stay tuned for my next video. It'll take me a little bit. I've been off for Christmas break, and so now i got to go back to work, so I'll be doing these as I can between working and weekends. And so my next um, video will be the building of the cart and the cart mechanism and getting that put together. And then, you know, behind the scenes, I'll also be building more tracks. So as I build out the rest of my track, I mean, I have plenty of time to do that. But as I build out the rest of my track, um, I'll be showing you that too. And the main reason right now I'm not building a bunch of track is because then i got to store it somewhere, which I still have to solve that problem. But I don't want to build out a bunch of track that I then have to stack and store. So it'll be built over the next couple of months. But in the meantime, I can show you a lot of the other things I'm doing. I'll show you some of the stuff from my past haunts. So have a great 2023, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.